This program is brought to you by Stanford Hospital and Clinics. The most common uh, refractive error is uh, nearsightedness, um, uh, followed by farsightedness. And most people have some degree of astigmatism as well. And then uh, the bulk of the population will have um, presbyopia as they get past their uh, early 40s. Uh, the most common treatment is something called wafering-guided LASIK. Uh, we do that about 75 to 80 percent of the time. And that takes care of r roughly 95 percent of all refractive errors. And we also do uh, what's called wafering-guided PRK, uh, which takes care of s almost the same population group uh, but it's more useful in patients who have thin corneas or um, uh, slightly irregular corneas that aren't candidates for LASIK. In the typical patient with nearsightedness, we see over 99.9% .9 of patients achieving 2040 vision or better, illegal driving vision, and somewhere uh, north of 95% of patients achieving 2020 or better. There's a whole host of potential side effects. The uh, most common side effect that we see with both LASIK and PRK uh, is increased dryness of the eyes. If you look in the short term, the first several months, it's about uh, 30 to 40 percent of patients will note that their eyes are drier than they were prior to surgery. And a year, at a year and beyond, it's about 5 percent. The second most common side effect is uh, developing some night vision phenomenon. Uh, increased glare, halo, uh, and things like this. Uh, other less uh, common things would be infection, inflammation following the surgery. But in general, it's considered safe and effective. Uh, and I think it's important just to discuss these complications uh, with your particular case with the, uh, uh, the ophthalmologist. There's not a long waiting list. Uh, you, if you are interested in having um, LASIK or PRK surgery at Stanford, uh, generally can be seen within uh, two, to, two to four weeks and have the surgery shortly thereafter. If you're highly nearsighted, what you, what you do is you can use a phacic intraocular lens. There are two versions in the U.S. One is a lens that clips onto the front portion of the uh, iris or the colored portion of the eye. And the second is a lens that slips behind the colored portion of the eye. It's a very straightforward uh, procedure, and generally there's no need for sutures, and the patients see well uh, uh, pretty much the next day. The results with phacic intraocular lenses are quite good. We saw that 96% uh, or so of eyes achieved 2040 vision or better, uh, with about 65% in 2020. And these are patients who had extreme levels of nearsightedness, uh, somewhere between minus 11 and minus 12 uh, in uh, the FDA clinical trials. Uh, there are some, uh, some patients who have astigmatism would, wait from, would benefit from waiting because there's a lens called a toric lens that's coming out that will also correct the astigmatism. Um, so the results are really fantastic with these lenses. I think ophthalmology is probably the most rapidly uh, changing field in medicine. Uh, we have uh, Every 12 to 18 months, we have new uh, equipment introduced, especially in the field of refractive surgery. Uh, I personally have done uh, more than a dozen FDA clinical trials, which have led to the approval of a variety of different uh, instruments and techniques. And there are hundreds and hundreds of new devices and drugs that have been employed and are currently being tested both in the United States and worldwide. The technology we're talking about is something called uh, femtosecond assisted cataract surgery. And the uh, femtosecond is a very expensive uh, device which, has been, which was actually developed at Stanford University. Um, and it's, it has the potential to revolutionize cataract surgery. It is a costly piece of equipment. Uh, and if you have cataract surgery, there is an allowance by uh, the government for, to charge the patient extra for these specialty lenses that I spoke of, multifocal lenses or accommodating lenses. Uh, that may be the model that's used when the femtosecond lasers are introduced, that there would be some additional cost borne by the patient, uh, but that's not been established as of yet.